Hi everybody, welcome to this week's session. I'm blessed enough to be recording this video today from beautiful sunny Florida. I, I came on a vacation for a week with my family. And so I decided this morning to catch up on some news, read the local newspaper, some Canadian newspapers, uh, really just do a little bit of a comparison on the American versus Canadian take. But I stumbled across an incredibly interesting article that really is very much in line with what I've been trying to teach for all these years. So what the article basically says is, Pasta might not be what's making us fat. Hmm. Interesting. So I continued to read. I wanted to see what their take on this was. Are they talking about alternative pastas or this new konjac pasta that's very low in calories? Or are they talking about regular standard pasta? So I continued to read. And what they were talking about was the fact that eating a balanced diet with reasonably sized portions of pasta two to three times a week does not encourage uncomfortable weight gain. So isn't this interesting? Isn't this basically what it all comes down to? You know, all these diets, keto or Atkins, or now there's this new snake diet I wanna talk about for a second. All these diets, they're all about becoming deficient in a particular nutrient so that your body starts to lose weight or shed fat. So in this particular case, what we've always heard and known is that a big plate of spaghetti is gonna make us fat. Guess what? It will. Eating a big plate of spaghetti will absolutely encourage unhealthy weight gain. But eating small, reasonable portions of pasta will not. So how is this possible? How is it that all these fad diets are wrong? Well, because it's just that. It's a fad diet, right? They become popular and then you don't hear about them for a while. And then they come back reformatted under a different name or a, a, a little bit of a different technique. This time ap apple cider vinegar added to your no-carb diet is what's going to make all the difference. Or There's so many different variations and takes on the same diet. So what I've always taught, what I truly believe in and what I know works is that a balanced diet with controlled portions is the most efficient way to lose weight and to keep it off permanently. Right, so you want pasta today. Take out two thirds of a cup of pasta dry and that's your serving. Load it up with vegetables and tomato sauces, avoid the cream sauces. And this is how you get to enjoy all the foods you love without becoming deficient. See, the way these diets work is, they make your body deficient in certain macronutrients so that your body triggers a new response and starts getting, let's say, its energy from a different source. So our body's first source of energy is carbohydrates. Our second source of energy are fats. And of course, our third is protein. When our body doesn't have carbs, it starts burning away fat. Of course, if you don't have enough fat, it starts to burn away at protein. So off the top, when you initially hear this, you say, oh wow, if I don't have carbs, my body's gonna burn fat, I'm gonna be healthy and wonderful. Yeah, temporarily you will absolutely start to lose weight because if you become deficient in carbohydrates, your body will start to burn fat for a while. What happens then is you start to plateau because your body starts to recognize that it's not getting the nutrients it needs to get through the day. So it goes into something called famine, um, a famine response. What does that mean? It means your body recognizes that it's not getting enough carbohydrates to fuel itself, so it starts to hold on to whatever it can as a reserve for fuel. It starts transforming whatever carbs and fats you have and stores it in all the places you don't want it, right? Fat never comes where you want it. Women, you want your fat around your breasts. Men, we want our fat around our pectorals. We want to look good and muscular. Women want to look slim and shapely. Well, that's not where fat holds onto it, does it? We find it on our thighs and our bums and our necks and the bottom of our arms. That just so happens because in a combination of hormones and famine response, that's where our body tends to hold on to this stuff, right? So why is it holding on to it? Because it knows it has to provide your body with energy regardless of the situation. We've heard horror stories where people were in impoverished states for many, many years. You look at North Korea right now. They have very limited, if any, food some days. And yes, they're smaller than they should be and they're not growing, but they do have the energy to get through the day because our bodies will do whatever it takes to get energy and allow our hearts to pump and our lungs to breathe, right? This all takes energy as well. It's not just the energy you need to run a marathon. Our body needs energy to survive. 
So by taking away the carbs and then trying to burn fat as your main source of fuel, you're causing long-term issues. Think about this, think about this analogy. Imagine having a backup generator in your backyard and the power goes out. So yeah, oh, you fire up the backup generator and that starts fueling your house, right? The lights come back on, the fridge humming, air conditioning, everything's going great. Now the power comes back on, but this is where it gets weird. You decide, regardless of whether or not the power is back on, you've now decided to use your backup generator as your main source of fuel. What's gonna happen to this generator that's intended only to be a secondary source? Eventually, it's gonna burn out. Eventually, it's not gonna run efficiently any longer. And eventually, it's gonna let you down. So what I'm taking from this article is, and I think the rest of the world is finally starting to catch up, that diminishing certain macronutrients from your diet is not the way to lose weight. It's not the way to be healthy. It's not the way to find happiness. Because if you take away the carbs, your body will start to burn fat. But anybody who's trying to lose weight is not just gonna take carbs out of their diet, they're also gonna reduce their fat intake. So then what happens? You're out of carbs, your body's storing it, not using it for energy. Where are you going for fuel? Your body's gonna go to its third source, protein. And where does protein store itself? In our muscles, right, our flesh. This is the protein, the meats that we're eating. This is not intended to fuel our bodies. Protein is for building tissue and building muscle and recovering from exercise and to give us sustenance, right? It gives us long-term satiation, it makes us feel good. We need protein to survive. Fuels our brains, fuels our bodies. Now, no carbs, we have no fats, we're limiting our protein intake and we're not losing weight. Sound familiar, everybody? It's called the dreaded diet cycle. It works like this. Take away one, body uses another, you start to plateau, you start to have cravings because your body's letting you know in a very, very subconscious way that it needs these nutrients. And it comes in the form of a craving. So those of us who have ever taken fats and, and carbs out of our diets entirely, we know that when 8.30, 9 o'clock rolls around, those kids go to bed. What are you thinking about? You're thinking about those snacks in the back of the cupboard that you leave for your kids' snacks. You're thinking about running to the Tim Hortons or to the donut shop and buying yourself a snack. I just saw a Facebook post of this fellow who was over 400 pounds. Now, he has successfully lost about 150 pounds, but this post was of him heading out to Belly Busters, which is a crazy sub shop in downtown Toronto, at three in the morning because he woke up hungry. This is not okay. This is not okay. You have to eat regular food throughout the day. So if you don't wanna feel hungry and you don't wanna start craving, the trick is to limit your portions and eat smaller meals throughout the day. Massive breakfast, massive lunch, massive dinner. You're getting your spikes and your drops and your spikes and your drops. You're full and you're hungry and you're full and you're hungry. You're energetic and you're tired. This isn't working. As I've said many times before, I'm gonna say it again. Albert Einstein said it best. Insanity, the actual definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. These diets don't work. What works is eating real whole foods. What works is making your meals smaller so that your hunger never becomes a hunger pain. Like if you had to rate your hunger from zero to 10, you should never be hungrier than a three or a four because that's when we start making knee-jerk reactions, right? You're on, the, you're on the road, let's say you're driving, you start to get hungry. Within minutes, you're starving. It goes from hunger to starving. You think that's by mistake? You think the billboards and the signs and every time you walk by a McDonald's or you drive by a bakery, you don't think those smells are triggering something in our body? Of course they are. We have to learn to fight it. The, way, the best, strongest, most available tool to us is food. Eat food equals not being hungry. If you're not hungry, you won't make bad choices. If you don't make bad choices, you're gonna maintain a healthy weight. It's actually that simple. I know it sounds difficult, and those of you on this program understand that all these little marginal changes that I introduce over the course of the year allow you to eat more food and never feel hungry. I'm sure you've noticed it already. You're eating less, you're never hungry, and you're losing weight. How easy, it's miraculous, isn't it? Mm, not really, because back in the day, go back a couple thousand years, you know, we talk about paleo diets or the caveman diets. 
They weren't eating two or three meals a day. They were eating and foraging and gathering food and eating it as they found it. If they had a handful of berries, they ate them. If they found a little animal to eat, they cooked it and they ate it. They didn't think about, oh, it's not dinner time. Maybe I shouldn't be eating. You don't only have to eat at dinner. I'm going to break free from the chains of your watches and your clocks. It's time to start eating every couple of hours. This is the only way to maintain a healthy weight. You can't allow yourself to go hungry. So what I'm trying to share with you today and what I got from this incredibly interesting article from the medical community, which focuses in sickness rather than wellness, is that they're finally understanding that maybe it's better to eat whole foods. Maybe it's okay to have a full whole diet that incorporates all the elements of food, carbs and fats and proteins. And guess what? Even an occasional snack. We have to enjoy life a little bit as well. You don't want to be so regimented that once again, you find yourself in a situation where you're resentful and you're angry and you're hungry and you're jonesing for something sweet. Instead, why not allow yourself a small piece of dark chocolate during the day? This will allow your brain to recognize that it's going to get this snack occasionally and it won't have you losing your mind. How many clients have I had who are losing their minds because they think they can't enjoy an occasional scoop of ice cream? Now, when I say a scoop of ice cream, I'm talking a tablespoon from their kid's ice cream. I'm not talking a scoop of ice cream. I'm not talking a double scoop of Baskin Robbins with marshmallows and nuts and covered in caramel sauce and a big, massive, disgusting waffle cone weighing in at 1,800 calories. I'm talking about reasonable, um, reasonable portion sizes to stave off those cravings. Yes, of course, I was just craving something now because I'm in the sun and for me it's a holiday, it's Passover, so we're limiting, we're very limited on what we can eat here. But I found myself craving something sweet in a bad, bad way. And I was just rummaging through the closets and I, I caught myself doing this. I said, oh my gosh, I haven't allowed myself, I haven't, I haven't allowed myself to eat the right foods throughout the day and here I am doing exactly what I've been teaching my members not to do. So I had a little piece of halva, which is a um, sesame seed, sweet, sugary, delicious, protein-filled treat. I happen to love it. And I know that tomorrow I'm going to ensure that I get extra fruits in my smoothies because that sugar is what's going to allow me to not crave that sugar. That's my weakness. We've all got our weaknesses. Mine is sugar. I love it. Who doesn't? It's delicious. It's self-gratifying. It's instantly gratifying, right? You take that sugar, mm, melts in your mouth. It's delicious. There's nothing better until three minutes later, and then there's nothing worse because that chocolate's gone. You're craving more, and it's stuck in right to your thighs, it's right on your butt where you don't want it. So, you've eaten the piece of chocolate, it's long gone out of the mouth. Is that it, your craving is gone? Probably not, probably has you craving more because there's no nutrition in it, right? So you wanna be eating healthy foods, allow yourself the occasional treat within the right portions, and you won't crave foods. You won't be dying to fill up that empty gap because there is no empty gap. It's really truly that easy. So I want, what I want you to take from this is once you get your meal plan, once you've really got your head around, you'll notice that we do encourage fats, that we do encourage carbs, that we do encourage healthy lean proteins. Eat them all because by taking certain things out of your diet, it's just going to leave you weak. And when you're in a weakened state, an emotionally distressed time, how many members do I have who have issues with their moms? And they get off the phone, they call me, I just spoke to my mom and she's making me crazy. I, I don't know what to do. Give me a diet. I want to lose weight. What do don't let yourself go there. Don't let yourself go there. Don't let yourself enter a weak situation. Be strong. Plan ahead. Eat all the food groups within your portion controlled servings and enjoy your life. Have fun, watch the weight fall off, and maintain it forever. You know, you can look great, you can feel great, you can lose weight, and you never have to look back as long as you don't starve yourself. Enjoy your food, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful week, and I wish you the following. A good week filled with good food and good vibes. Remember, you have to eat well to feel well, and if you feel well, you'll live well. And that's really what it all comes down to. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. You know, you can always ask questions at myoptimizedlife.ca and I can always be reached on Facebook at Jason the Nutritionist. Have a great day, everybody. Take care.